Film emulation is always fun. And there's a few camera brands out there. People buy just for the way their photos look straight out of camera. We're gonna talk about how to do that with Lumix because starting with the S5 II, they offered some really cool in-camera features to get filmic photos and cinematic videos straight out of camera. So saved to either the JPEG or baked into the video file. We're gonna go through that today. I'll be showing you how I do it on the S5 II X, but this works on anything released after the S5 II. So that also includes the G9 II. They all work the exact same way. And a huge thank you to Lumix. I've been using their cameras a ton over the last year. So this isn't a review. I just wanna show you how to get the most out of your camera. The way we're gonna do this is mostly focused around the feature called real-time LUT. Now, if you haven't used LUTs before, don't worry, I'm gonna show you, but it's a photo style that can basically bake in a preset. This is a little bit easier on video, so that's what we're gonna look at first. And you can make this work with whatever your favorite LUTs are, or you can create your own. It's pretty easy to do. There's lots of tutorials out there. I designed a pack just for this video so I could show you how they work in real time. So there's a link down below if you wanna pick those up. Uh, otherwise, you can really use anything. It's pretty straightforward, but I can't go through all the LUT creation in this video. So let's start off by how we install them. First, put a memory card in our computer and navigate to wherever our LUTs are stored. Select all of them and drag them to the root folder. And if this is your first time dealing with LUTs, quick explanation is that it's a little text file that tells each color what other color to transform to. So maybe bright red becomes dark red, except there's a whole 3D graph of all these changes. It's very standard in video production. Now we're gonna be applying it to photos too. Then we take that card and put it back in our camera. We're going to open up the menu, go to the gear icon and LUT library. It's right here in the first image quality tab. I've already got mine loaded in here, but if you just select one, press okay. You're gonna have the option to load or delete. You're gonna load it, select the memory card, and one at a time select each LUT and load it in. When it's done, it'll look like this and you can have up to 11 different LUTs loaded into your library. And if you're using my LUTs, any of the ones that say Vlog, these are the ones we'll be using for video, and the ones that say STD, that's for the standard profile, those are gonna be used in photos. So starting in video mode, we're going to switch over to that on the top dial, open up our menu and go to the red camera icon, and photo style, which is kind of near the top of everything. The default will be set to standard. It's really clean and natural, and I actually use this profile all the time, especially for photography, but for video, it's a bit lacking. So let's take a look at the test scenario we set up. This is standard. The colors are really nice, but a little boring for what we're doing today. And also notice how the highlights are completely clipped outside the window. We wanna bring those back, and there's a way we can do it without editing in post. So make sure your cursor is at the top of the screen here. I'm gonna flip from standard, keep going until we find real-time LUT. If we press down, this is where the actual LUT is selected, and we're gonna use this focus button up here to select them, or you can also touch the screen. Here are all those LUTs that we loaded in that are in our library. And let's start off by looking at Vlog to Rec. 709. This is just a basic transform. Real-time LUT always starts with log footage, so if you haven't seen log footage, it looks super flat and desaturated and uninteresting. Nobody actually should be using log footage. You want to add a transform, which is what this LUT is doing. Trans transforming it from log to Rec. 709 to full contrast. Now the transform is meant to look very natural and adaptable, so you could still add another preset on top of this in post if you want, but it looks good out of camera, it's completely usable. Here it is compared to what Lumix's Rec. 709 preset looks like, built into the camera, it's a little bit flatter, a little less oomph to it. But you can see those highlights out the window are completely safe, they're not blown out at all, and this is why I use log all the time, it's just like a much nicer image and looks more cinematic, whatever that means. Since I usually color grade my footage, this is the baked in LUT that I'm most likely to use, but I did provide some more filmic ones too. So let's take a look at what those look like. We can go and load them in. Here is film one, not pushing the colors too far, got kind of a soft contrast to it. And here's film two, it's a little punchier, definitely cooler and just a stronger film look. And these type of baked in film looks, I'd only use if I'm gonna be posting that video file straight to the internet. It's not really going through any editing, I just want it to look perfect right away. But remember, you can't really color grade these away later, the look is baked in. So if you wanna play it safe, then more neutral LUT is safer. Now let's do the same thing to photos. So keep in mind, this only applies to JPEGs because RAW files don't have an inherent look baked into them. It's gonna be whatever you edit into those RAW files later using Lightroom or Capture One, which you can also use LUTs. So this is about if you want something straight out of camera that looks great, which is really fun to shoot that way. And that means JPEGs. So first of all, we'll switch back to a photo mode. I'm gonna use manual right now. Go to image quality and down to picture quality. Make sure that it is on 
raw and fine, or raw standard. This is just how big you want your JPEGs to be. Now this is building on the same things that we did for videos. So we're gonna go into photo style, real-time light. The trick is that real-time light is actually always using V-Log, right? Which is meant for video, but if you shoot like this, you're gonna find a lot of your images are really underexposed because the exposure just works differently between V-Log, photo, and video. I actually set my exposure the same in all my samples and you'll notice the window in the photos is a little blown out because it exposes differently. I should have lowered it and exposed for the scene. I just kept them all the same. But what we're gonna do is use a small workaround. Now these two LUTs only apply to like a full contrast image already. That's why I named them standard. You can use any LUT out there that is meant to go on top of a fully contrasty image, right? Like it's not meant for log. But we have a problem. If you look at these photos straight out of real time light, there is no contrast. It looks like log except, you know, maybe slightly different, but more or less, it's a flat image. It's not usable. But fortunately, Lumix built in a handy workaround. So down at the bottom here, we have display, save. We're gonna save it as a photo style. You can actually save a ton of these. I only have a few that are enabled right now. I'm gonna save this in photo style one and just overwrite what's already there. And now our preset is saved to be, well, exactly what we saw a minute ago, it's still log and you can actually see it in the menu here. Photo style is V-log. With one little turn, we can bring back all of our contrast and now we have our film preset on top of the standard profile from Lumix and it looks great. So now we do need to save that. Down below again, we're gonna tap save load and save current settings on top of the photo style that we're working in. So I'm gonna save this into style one. Overwrite, yes. Okay, so now every time I come back to it, I'm gonna have this, like a fully contrasty filmic style. Let's do that again for film style number two, since I got two film LUTs here. I'm gonna go to real time LUT, go to LUT select, film 02, Lumix standard, display save, style two, overwrite those settings, and then change the default from vlog over to standard. Now I gotta save that again, and here's what film two looks like, straight out of camera. That's almost all of it, but there's one other setting that can really affect how things look. So we're gonna go back into image quality and scroll down until we get to eye dynamic range. I think this is set to auto by default. I don't know, tell me what it's set to right now on your camera. But uh, for these presets, I've actually turned it to low. I find that it really raises the shadows and on my LUTs anyway, it makes them look not contrasty enough. It needs a little bit more punch to it. So I'd like to turn that down to low or maybe standard if you want a little bit of a softer look. But just be aware this does change how your shadows are treated in your final image. So that's how you get film emulation straight out of your Lumix camera. Hope that was helpful guys. I've got a few tutorials about color grading. If you're still trying to figure that out, watch those next and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.